Okay, thank you. Thank you for inviting me, Peter and Karima. I'm so glad to be here, and it feels absolutely perfectly relevant to speak about the body and soul of cities when in this beautiful, charming city of Den Bosch. And uh, this is uh, actually one of my favorite themes. It was one of the uh, projects in my thesis. I finished my dissertation at KTH, the Royal Institute of Technology in Stockholm, uh, last year. And, and I am now working at a consultancy company in Sweden um, with the issues concerning urban development, urban planning, mainly within Re, uh, regional and urban studies. So that's my background, very brief. And I think we're behind schedule, so I will try to condense my presentation as much as possible, but uh, hopefully I might be able to like take a few minutes of your lunch break. I hope I will not, but I will do my best here to, to be brief. Okay, I will speak about a paper that Karima, Peter and I are writing together and it's called How to Make Cities the Home of People. Uh, so the presentation is thoughts, ideas and also results from this paper. And the base assumption is that cities can be seen as is very com common nowadays as living organism having both a body and a soul. A body which could be explained by the built environment related to, for example, roads, streets, parks, etc., and also a virtual component, which is more the lifestyle, the culture, and, uh, and the social capital of the city. So uh, the body and soul, both they're mutually interconnected and they are both driving forces of urban attractiveness. And they shape the expressions, the thoughts and opinions and the values the people have of urban attractiveness. And we, we develop a concept called city love, which is an expression for, for urban attractiveness, for city appreciation. And when discussing uh, cities from the view that they are living organisms, it becomes very relevant to also uh, discuss health checks on cities, which is also common nowadays, to actually see, to develop some kind of measures that check up on their both mental and physical health. And these kinds of measures are what we're looking for. But measures like this are not easy to come by, easy to develop, because city attractiveness is, is hard. It, it is hard to, to measure due to many things. Among other things, cities are heterogeneous. The citizens are very heterogeneous. There is a vast uh, portfolio of different amenities to, to choose and to measure. So this is not an easy thing to do. And it calls for, uh, the situation today calls for more statistical data on this matter. And it also calls for, for better measurements, for better holistic measurements of people's appreciations in the city. Um, and that is what we are actually trying to achieve with this paper. So we uh, perform some empirical analysis, both exp exploratory and explanatory. Uh, and we use a survey, a micro-based survey uh, among citizens in four uh, Swedish cities. And um, this is, uh, it's the inhabitants in those cities. And this was a survey that I used also in my thesis. And the data material is quite rich. It's 2,573 respondents. And we sent, I sent out like 6,600 questionnaires from the beginning, so the response rate was 40%. And it was a stratified random sample. Uh, and uh, there were, of course, too, far too many questions in the questionnaire, which is, as I understand, very common when you are a PhD to use far too many questions. But hopefully I can be able to use them afterwards. And this is only an example of, of uh, questions that were posed. So for example, statement, statements about different characteristics in the city, and statesman, statements about the relation you can have to your city, and also questions about the city's soul or identity, as you could also call it. Um, 
Okay, and if you have more questions about the method and so on, you can, I would be happy to answer during the lunch break. Uh, but just, we just skip into the results right away. And to give you an example, because when you speak about the city solely, I mean, it's not a well-defined concept. So uh, it's interesting to know that the respondents in this survey, they had a pretty good idea of what the soul of their city was. So we had this open-ended question, uh, which was, could you describe the soul of your city in your own words? And there were many answers. I think 75% of all the people that answered this long questionnaire actually wrote pretty much on these questions. And this is just to give you a flavor of the, what kind of uh, uh, questions were asked. So these are just a couple of, um, quotes from there, and I will not go through them further. But we also had what, uh, what we call relation to the city, and these were in fact six statements about attachment to the city, uh, do I feel if I, if I belong in the city, pride, identification with the citizens, uh, loyalty in terms of recommendations and in terms of wanting to stay in the city, not having to move from there, and satisfaction. And uh, when we created this city love relation index, which uh, I will show we have used for some uh, interesting regression analysis, it was actually based on three of these relation aspects. So uh, we created it from the, the average, the mean of proud, satisfaction, and loyalty, um, if I would like to recommend the city. So those three are the city love. And uh, this is actually the scores for city love, the city love relation index, and as you can see, um, I'm not really sure about this. Okay, you can see there that the total mean is uh, 7.15 on a nine point scale. So people are pretty much in love with their cities here, which is good, they live there. So it would be not so good if they didn't love it. And these are, in Sweden, the four biggest cities. They are quite successful in their way. And there is a little bit of a difference between the cities, but they are, mostly they are quite similar with, with each other. And when we come to the characteristics, these were 35 uh, questions about the city. Uh, and these are here grouped into 12 different groups. Each group is then like two, up to, from two to five statements or questions. And so we will use this, these characteristics now to try to explain the city love relation index. So what is it in fact? that build up the city love relation? What is it that has the strongest impact on, uh, on my love for the city in terms of characteristics? And the first thing was to, oh, sorry, was to try and divide these characteristics into those that explains more the soul of the city and those that explains more the body of the city. And this, this was done through correlations and um, regression analysis. And you can see that the sole type of characteristics are typically the ones related to aesthetics, uh, cozy neighborhoods, we have symbols, statues and art, we have experiences, vocability and that type of, of characteristics. And on the other side, the body type of characteristics would, were more the built environment, the schools as well, sport facilities, universities, uh, religious institutions, and so on. So we had approximately 14 uh, characteristics in the soul uh, box and uh, 20 characteristics in the other box. And now, uh, um, simple linear regression analysis uh, using the um, uh, the City Love Relation Index, which was recommendation, pride, uh, and satisfaction, um, as dependent, and the, these two 
types of characteristics as independence. And what you can see is that they are both significant in the regression. They are both, as we said in the beginning, drivers for urban appreciation or city appreciation. And uh, actually, the soul characteristics have a somewhat stronger quantitative impact. So the soul characteristics in this uh, regression, due to, uh, if you look at this regression, is actually more important than the body for the love uh, relation index. We also perform the same type of analysis for each city, and you can see that the results are similar. Uh, independently of city, and uh, they are they are significant in all the um, for all the cities, and uh, so the sole type of characteristics are stronger, even though there is a small difference in some cities of Sweden. Uh, this um, soul the sole type of characteristics is actually even stronger, uh, as you can see for Gothenburg and Malmo. Okay, so just to sum up, I'm actually super fast, that's good. <laughs> uh, the love relation index uh, is, is shown to be an uh, interesting construct that actually can be uh, used and it can also be composed into soul and body perceptions of the city. And um, uh, the physical dimension here, the body uh, is related to public and private space, while the so soul aspects is, still, is related to, to other things like happiness, satisfaction and appreciation. But both are significant when it comes to um, modeling the city love relation and actually the soul type of characteristics have a somewhat stronger uh, effect on the city love. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much for that very efficient presentation <laughs> and for answering what's more important about your soul. I see we have a question there. Yeah, thank you very much, Mia. A very interesting paper. Uh, one of the, I'm very interested in your love uh, index or your love relation index and the uh, uh, drivers behind it. I'm interested in the cities that you include include the three largest cities in Sweden, and then you include Umeå, which is a city of about 100,000, a bit less than about 100,000. And most of the literature tends to highlight that people want to get out of smaller, peripheral, remote, not that very dynamic cities, but yet what you find is that the love relationship doesn't really vary depending on the type, the prosperity, and the dynamism of cities. Why do you think that's the case? And can you extrapolate, would you be able to extrapolate this to the rest of Sweden and perhaps to other countries? Uh, yes, I think, first of all, you may also, it's, it's important to know that Umeå, which is a quite small town, uh, it's a um, university kind of city. So it's filled with students and it's a very uh, lively uh, type of city, more with a maybe a larger city's character, uh, actually. So, so they don't have the same type of problems as other more, uh, what do you say, av the average city of that size. Uh, so if you, if you d dig into it deeper, you will find Umeå quite similar to these cities. But if you use other cities, I, I made a pilot study before this with four other cities in Sweden, and among them uh, a small city called Eskilstuna. And that had quite a, a different pattern. So it was um, still quite, uh, that city had quite low scores on these type of questions. So you're right in, in theory, yeah. <laughs>